Let us begin by understanding what a nucleophilic substitution reaction actually means. The word nucleophilic comes from two parts, nucleo meaning nucleus, or positive center, and philic meaning loving. So a nucleophile is something that loves the nucleus, or more simply, something that is negatively charged and wants to attack a positive center. Now, substitution means replacement, where one group leaves and another takes its place. Formally, we define it like this. A nucleophilic substitution reaction is a type of organic reaction in which a strong nucleophile replaces a weak nucleophile in an organic molecule. Let us imagine an alkyl halide. This means a carbon atom bonded to a halogen like chlorine. The halogen, being more electronegative, pulls the shared electrons toward itself. As a result, the chlorine becomes slightly negative, and the carbon becomes slightly positive. OH is a nucleophile because it has a negative charge and a lone pair of electrons on oxygen. Now, if we bring a nucleophile like OH near this molecule, the strong OH nucleophile will attack the positively charged carbon and push out the weaker nucleophile, like the halogen. This is why we say the strong nucleophile replaces the weak one. And that is the core idea behind a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now, there are two main types of nucleophilic substitution reactions namely SN1 and SN2. SN stands for substitution nucleophilic. The one or two tells us whether the reaction depends on one molecule or two molecules during its rate determining step. Let's look at both one by one. The SN1 reaction is a unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction where uni means one. That means the rate of reaction depends only on one molecule, usually the alkyl halide. This type of reaction is most favored by tertiary alkyl halides because they form a stable carbocation. By the way, a carbocation is a positively charged ion with a carbon atom that has only three bonds, giving it a total of six valence electrons instead of the usual eight. This electron deficiency makes carbocat ion highly reactive and unstable, often existing only for a very short time during the reaction. Also note that I will be using a term called polar solvent, which has molecules with an uneven distribution of electrons, resulting in a partial positive charge on one end and a partial negative charge on the other, a property known as a dipole moment. Now let's understand the mechanism. The SN1 reaction happens in two steps. Step one is the formation of a carbocat ion. Take a tertiary alkyl halide and dissolve it in a polar solvent. The polar solvent helps to separate the halide, like chlorine, from the carbon. The bond between carbon and chlorine breaks, the chlorine leaves as a negatively charged ion, and the carbon becomes a positively charged ion. This is called a carbocat ion. This step is slow, and therefore, it is the rate determining step. Notice that before breaking, the carbon's bond angles were about 109.5 degrees, or tetrahedral. But once the halogen leaves and a carbocat ion is formed, the structure becomes planar, and the bond angles become around 120 degrees. Step two is the attack of the nucleophile. Now, the nucleophile, like OH, can attack the carbocat ion from either side, left or right, because the planar structure gives equal access from both sides. If it attacks from the same side, we say 50% retention of configuration, meaning half of the original shape is retained. If it attacks from the opposite side, we say 50% inversion of configuration, meaning the shape is flipped. Thus, SN1 reactions produce a mixture of both retained and inverted products, often giving a racemic mixture. Finally, just remember the trend that the SN1 reaction is fastest in tertiary or 3-degree carbons, 
slower in secondary or two-degree carbon, and slowest in primary or one-degree carbons, because carbocation instability increases with more alkyl groups. Now let us look at the SN2 reaction, which is bimolecular nucleophilic substitution, where bi means two. Here, the rate of reaction depends on both the alkyl halide and the nucleophile. This reaction is most favored by primary alkyl halides because the carbon is less crowded and the nucleophile can easily attack. The SN2 mechanism occurs in just one single step. Here, the strong nucleophile approaches the carbon from the backside, the side opposite to where the halogen is attached. As the nucleophile starts forming a bond with carbon, the carbon-halogen bond begins to break at the same time. This produces a temporary transition state where the carbon is partially bonded to both the nucleophile and the leaving group. This state is unstable and exists only for a fraction of a second. Then the halogen completely leaves and the nucleophile takes its place. The result is a molecule in which the configuration of the carbon center is completely inverted, like flipping an umbrella inside out. This is known as inversion of configuration or the Walden inversion. The rate order of SN2 reactions is the opposite of SN1 as it is fastest for primary carbons, slower for secondary, and very slow for tertiary carbons because bulky groups around the carbon block the nucleophile's approach. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.